Yes, I'm Seth uh, Pokoski, I'm from Finland, and uh, we have prepared this uh, presentation together with Eila Linnamäki, who's present as well. And the topic is health inequalities and public health in, in Finland. Uh, and we come from the National Institute for Health and Welfare, which has been recently formed by uh, joining the National Public Health Institute and the National Research and, I can't remember the whole name, Stakes, some, some people may know. Uh, the contents of this presentation will uh, start from uh, a few slides on, on background issues, uh, and then I'll try to be provo provocative uh, and ask why on earth should we do something about these inequalities, uh, go to more practical aims and uh, describe shortly the Finnish National Action Plan, which has recently been completed and uh, end up in a conclusion. Well, uh, first of all, there are quite wide disparities in health in Finland as well as in other countries, women live seven years longer than men, but during the uh, break I just came to think that uh, perhaps it's not so great if you have to spend more of most of the seven years in queuing to uh, public toilets. <laughs> Since uh, we men could uh, just march in and, and women like usually at the queue. Uh, there are regional differences, perhaps not quite as wide as in the United States, uh, but uh, from the western coast to the uh, northeastern part, there's a difference in, in life expectancy among men about four years and among women uh, about two years. Uh, marital status, living arrangements uh, are closely connected with one's uh, health and we've calculated that uh, although most of the working age people are married, uh, in the whole working age population one third of all deaths could be avoided if the other groups would uh, reach the same level where the, the married people are. Ethnicity is a big uh, question and closely connected with health. Uh, in Finland, uh, we have so far had very little information, partly because our population has been uh, very... Uh, there have been uh, not very many immigrants in, in Finland. But I'll concentrate for the rest of this presentation to differences, inequalities according to socioeconomic position, uh, which are wide. If, you, if we first look at uh, occupational classes, the uh, the blue line on, on top uh, represents higher non-manual classes and the red line uh, represents manual workers. And, and we can see that uh, life expectancy has increased since the beginning of 1980s in each group, but this uh, positive development has been most rapid in the uppermost classes, so that the difference in, in life expectancy has increased uh, looking at the 35-year-old person has increased by one year from 2.2 years to 3.2 years among women and a little more, 1.3 years in men. Uh, if we look at education, the result is quite similar. Uh, that com if, uh, a man aged 35 can expect to live up to 80 years if he has a university degree, but only to the age of 74 years if he's not completed any 
degree beyond the basic education. And in, in women, there's a corresponding, but not quite as wide, difference. And this difference has uh, increased both in, in women and in men. In men from 4.7 to 6.2 years since the beginning of uh, 1970s. Uh, and in women from 2.7 to 3.6 years. And the third uh, indicator of socioeconomic position, which we uh, have, uh, often have data on, is uh, income. And here we have ordered the Finnish population of, according to the uh, uh, income of the household divided by the consumption units. So, uh, to uh, deciles, 10% uh, parts, uh, and if we uh, compare mortality of the other income groups to that, to mortality in the uh, highest income decile, we can see that uh, among women the mortality increases steadily so that it's about 1.7 times higher uh, in the lowest income decile and in, in men it's uh, even about 2.4 times higher uh, in the lowest income decile and this is, this is a fairly uh, stable gradient uh, linear uh, association. But mortality is not doesn't tell, give the whole picture of health and, and if we look at self-rated health, for example, and at this time young adults, we can see tremendous differences. Uh, and these young adults, aged 18 to 29, have been classified according to the education, so that uh, those who still have not completed their education are supposed to complete the degree they are uh, studying for. And uh, the people, young adults in the highest uh, educational groups uh, consider themselves quite healthy, but those who only have the basic education, who comprise some 10 to 15 percent of, of the age group, uh, have considerably worse health. And if we go to uh, problems of elderly people and, and uh, different uh, difficulties in uh, functional capacity, in this instance, um, moving difficulties, difficulties in, in mobility, they are much more common among persons within lower socioeconomic position compared to those in, who have a higher position. Uh, that's uh, the sort of, sort of starting point description of the problems uh, in a nutshell. Uh, and we have some advantages, uh, a good basis from one point of view at least, uh, or a couple of points of view, to address the social determinants of health inequalities in, in Finland. First of all, uh, it's a sort of positive background that, that health has improved public health in general quite rapidly and health as well as equity are valued by the authorities as well as by most citizens. And as a result, reducing health inequalities has been a stated national policy goal for several decades. Uh, Unfortunately, very little positive development has been observed. Uh, and this national action plan, which I will describe in more detail in, in a moment, has been recently produced. And even in, in local areas, in municipalities and regions, which are responsible for many actions which uh, affect health inequalities, there is growing awareness and activity around health inequalities. Furthermore, uh, we 
have quite a good knowledge base and, and active research on this area. Uh, uh, registers uh, are quite uh, complete and, and good quality and they are used in these analyses. We have health surveys including health interview surveys and, and postal surveys and health examination surveys uh, which are actively analyzed and we are uh, preparing an immigrant health study. Uh, we are also preparing uh, a large-scale uh, postal survey on health and welfare which will be uh, useful for the regional level uh, and there is a growing use of combinations of survey and, and register data. But there are of course many challenges as well and, and many social determinants of health have uh, shown quite unfavorable development. The unemployment uh, rate uh, did not come very down, very much down after the uh, recession of the 90s and now there is a new rapid worsening of the situation. Income differences have been increasing, some people consider them to be a sort of engine for the economy and, and see them as a good thing, but most people uh, concerned with health and welfare inequalities do not think so. Uh, social welfare benefits uh, were cut to some extent during the last recession and the situation has not been uh, corrected uh, 100%. Uh, health promotion is uh, it's, it's easy to cut uh, resources from health promotion uh, easier than from uh, for example uh, uh, ambulatory services since people are very annoyed if they cannot uh, reach a doctor within a few hours if they seek a cure for the problems uh, but they don't uh, see it as, as a similar problem if they are not given advice on, on uh, stopping smoking for example and that's uh, why I, I suppose these uh, health promotion uh, activities are often cut when, when resources are going down. And interest of economic life, as I already in a way implied, uh, may contradict partly those of the health sector. But of course we should uh, aim at seeing uh, synergies and win-win situations whenever possible. Uh, there's, at least in Finland, but I suppose in many other countries as well, there, there's a tendency to, uh, to show how dynamic and, and rapidly acting you are and, and this is seen as an abundance of short-term programs and, and projects and uh, serious problems uh, are tried to be tackled by uh, these short-term projects and it leads to sort of a program jungle and, and long-term development work uh, is not emphasized as much as it should be, I think. Uh, furthermore, the National Action Plan it does comprise suggestions for action but it does not oblige the actors. Uh, some further uh, problems are that the easy availability and low prices of alcohol uh, prices were uh, lowered and, and the availability was uh, made easier a uh, couple of years ago and, and we can see the uh, harm which concentrates in the lower socioeconomic groups. Uh, disparities in smoking continue to increase uh, inequalities in health and its determinants tend to be very steep among young adults and, and we, we may expect these to be seen in the future in, in, the, uh, in the cohorts when they grow older. Uh, 
a new effective medical technology uh, is not likely to be similarly available for everyone because it's uh, because of limitations of, of its uh, of access to it. Well, uh, in the previous uh, polit policy papers, for example, it was very much stressed that, that uh, inequalities in health are uh, not ethically uh, acceptable. If we live in a modern welfare state which is committed to the value of equality, uh, health inequities are, are uh, a problem. Uh, Everyone uh, nods uh, when someone says this, but very little uh, action is taken. And, and that's why we have tried to uh, sort of uh, catalyze action by using other arguments. And, and the public health arguments may be more uh, important in, in uh, leading to, to activities. And, the argument is that public health will improve much more effectively when, when the health of the large groups uh, with uh, accumulating problems is promoted than if we uh, can improve health of, of the elite. Um, and some crude calculations have been carried out and, and we can see that uh, the prevalence of having no teeth of your own, uh, which is the first line, uh, would be 80% uh, lower than it is today if all people, the whole population would reach the same level which has been reached by, by persons belonging to the highest educational group. Respiratory deaths, about two-thirds of them could be avoided, more than half of alcohol-related deaths, about half of need for daily help due to restrictions in functional capacity would uh, be erased if, if uh, the whole population would reach the uh, same level which uh, the uh, higher education group has already reached. So these are common problems and the public health implications are, are tremendous even if we could just halve, halve the, uh, the differences or inequalities from the present level. So uh, due to its public health uh, importance, health inequality uh, is important uh, from the point of view of, of labor, sufficiency of labor force, uh, sufficiency of, of services uh, and as we know that poor health is a factor in social exclusion it, uh, it's important from that point of view as well and health inequalities uh, due to these uh, uh, reasons in part uh, have negative economic effects and these kind of arguments I, I think that uh, in different kinds of uh, regimes may uh, provide a uh, sort of uh, reasonable background for starting and activities. Well, some words about the aims. Uh, first of all, monitoring is, is a kind of basis, a, a cornerstone for, for uh, reducing health inequalities, at least I, I think so. Uh, because monitoring makes uh, health inequalities and their trends, time trends visible. They provide information which is needed for targeting activities uh, according to need. They provide information which is needed for the evaluation of, of activities. Uh, they serve as a basis for research into causes uh, and ways to reduce health inequalities. And they should, uh, this monitoring should, uh, should provide us with up-to-date information on, uh, on different dimensions of, of health, on different uh, environmental and behavioral factors affecting health, need for care, uh, coverage contents and effects of, of treatment and prevention and social security. And, and this information uh, or 
according to socioeconomic position. Uh, in the national action plan, there's a, there are proposals uh, to uh, improve monitoring, uh, for example, by, by linking information on the level of education and occupation from the population registers to other registers which are used in, in uh, health monitoring and to surveys, population surveys, uh, so that we could even analyze the, uh, the non-participation and its effect uh, on the results if we know the social position of, of those who responded and those who did not respond. And furthermore, these uh, information, uh, these data should be linked to client information systems of the health sector. We don't yet know how well we can proceed in these lines, but we'll see. And uh, most of the health monitoring uh, reports report uh, results according to age and gender, and usually also by, by region, but, but the uh, idea is to, to add at least socioeconomic position and possibly living arrangements to this list of routine background variables. Uh, we sh uh, in addition to uh, monitoring, we should uh, find out more about the determinants of uh, health disparities uh, and their role. I won't go through this, uh, this uh, sort of short group description of, of, the, of the causal network which is, lies behind the uh, inequalities, but uh, there are very many open questions. Uh, we do know that, that about half of, of men, men's uh, differences in life expectancy would be uh, eradicated if, if uh, smoking and drinking patterns would be similar in, in uh, all sections of the population, but that's just a part of, of the explanation, of course. Uh, but here's an example uh, uh, concerning smoking in, in young adults, and again we have classified them according to their ed education, following the same uh, practice as I described earlier, and we can see that those uh, young adults who have received uh, higher university education, uh, only 10% of them smoke daily, whereas about one half of, of those who only have basic education smoke. So this is a trem tremendous difference and, and has implications to the future health of these cohorts. Uh, another example is that uh, when we uh, look at elderly women, for example, we see great educational differences in uh, mobility difficulties, in this instance, stair climbing. And uh, we have analyzed which uh, sort of intermediary factors have, what their contribution to these uh, educational differences in mobility or, and, and we can see that uh, obesity, body mass index, uh, in both in self-reported difficulties as well as in test-based uh, limitations, obesity is a very strong uh, intermediary factor between education and mobility difficulties, and uh, uh, osteoarthritis of the knee and, and hip is another thing. So this provides some uh, uh, sort of uh, points to, to be uh, taken up when we want to uh, do something about the educational differences. Third aim of of course, is to develop means uh, to tackle health disparities uh, and uh, so that from the blue bar situation uh, which described the 
uh, health inequity situation so that health there's uh, the more health you have the higher your socioeconomic position is the aim is to uh, to add these red parts of the bar <laughs> so that uh, everyone would have a better health than earlier and the benefit would be greatest the, where the problems are greatest. Uh, in Finland we have had uh, this Teroka project which uh, aims at reducing health inequalities and, and uh, helping regional and, and national uh, actors to, to uh, succeed in this effort. Uh, our uh, experiences uh, can be uh, collected to, uh, to these few lines and we, we have noticed that we do need close collaboration. If we want to uh, achieve results on the regional and, and local level. We do need close collaboration between research act, uh, institutes, policymakers and professionals. And uh, we have to uh, see that, that different regions uh, differ from each other and there is no uniform form way to uh, achieve good results, but we should be sensitive to the uh, local special features. One thing which has come very clear is that regarding monitoring is that uh, local uh, people do not uh, value national data. They, they don't think that the national data represent themselves. They, they see themselves as a special case and they want to have uh, information concerning their own population. And, and this is uh, something which comes up everywhere. Furthermore, we do need to uh, use simple <laughs> uh, terminology and not, uh, not the professional terminology everywhere. Uh, we should start from the decision makers points of, of view and, and admit that they, they have uh, economic problems to worry about and, and think how health inequality reduction could be uh, useful for, for these purposes. The aim of reducing health inequality should be incorporated in, in the regional strategies, otherwise very little is expected to take place. Uh, we do need intersectoral work, but the health sector is an important advocate in, in this uh, instance, of course. And furthermore, we should we should be patient so that uh, and understand that it takes time, even several years, to understand, digest, and, and start concrete actions. Uh, then a few words about the national action plan. Uh, it was started its preparation in, in uh, 2006 uh, in the national body and uh, a large number of experts took part in, in this preparation. Uh, it has long-term objectives but most of the measures are, are sort of connected to the present government term, four-year term. Uh, most, very many measures are, are uh, connected with or have been already mentioned in, in other programs and, and we just want to give emphasis to those uh, activities and, and aims and, and measures which have been presented in other programs which uh, are useful for the purpose of reducing health inequalities. Health in all policies is a strategic uh, approach in the action plan. Uh, there is emphasis both on the whole social gradient, which was uh, exempt, seen, for example, in the income results, as well as vulnerable or mar marginalized minorities. 
And in addition to universal services, which uh, have an important role, it's believed that, that also targeted measures for the most disadvantaged are, are needed. And not very many separate structures or resources are, are available or on perhaps even necessary, but, but focusing and, and mainstreaming ongoing activities so that health inequalities would uh, be emphasized is, is a, a central uh, principle. We in, uh, look at general social policy actions uh, as well as try to influence lifestyles uh, and services and develop the monitoring system and information base. And there are a few lines uh, which are stressed in, in the action plan and regarding general social policy. There's a, uh, uh, an aim to promote the health and well-being of youth. In vocational education especially, since there's a great difference uh, in health and its determinants in, in people in going to universities and, and polytechnics or whatever you call them, and, and those who uh, are in, in vocational education. Uh, and in the workplace, uh, health promotion should be uh, promoted. Uh, lifestyles uh, are influenced by various uh, Ways, taxation, uh, and other other ways to to uh, affect lifestyles are mentioned. Uh, services uh, are stressed uh, so that they would be available, especially to those who who, who have the greatest need. Uh, we do have. Uh, for example, one, one, one example is that uh, coronary heart disease deaths are about three times as common in, in the lowest parts of the socioeconomic ladder compared to the highest part. But if, if we look at uh, heart surgery, uh, there is no difference between the educational groups or income groups, uh, and this can be seem to indicate uh, that the services are not uh, used according to need. But that's just one example, there are others as well, and, and these uh, should be tackled. Uh, the monitoring system I already dealt with, uh, its improvement is seen as important. And finally, uh, my conclusion from uh, these and other data is that health inequalities can be reduced. For example, we do know that the magnitude of health inequalities vary markedly between societies and time periods, and there's no natural law which would inevitably lead to a certain level of health inequalities. And there are positive examples from, from many countries, I suppose, uh, in, in Finland at least two come up one is uh, the reduction of health disparities between the northeast and southwest. Although they exist, they, are, they have been reduced. And a uh, dramatic improvement has been seen in, in uh, children's uh, regional and socioeconomic health differences. Partly, I suppose, due to the uh, child health clinics and related activities which cover the whole population. So, uh, I believe that health inequalities can be reduced, but it uh, requires determined long-term intersectoral work. Thank you.